one that his team is really going to like. Solid opening, and actually, to be fair, it's one that his team is really going to like. It's the kind of positions that Magnus Carlsen really enjoys, the kind of positions that Levon Aronian really enjoys. So it's a perfect segue into the kind of styles that they really like. Whereas Team Rex, I think, is going for more of a Kings Indian style approach, and that actually suits some of their players. We can see uh, former world champion Gary Kasparov, one of the most proficient players in the Kings Indian setups. And we see that we have a very interesting opening, and we'll see how they follow up afterwards. And Magnus can't stop laughing. We should point out Gary Kasparov, big fan of Rex Singfield. He actually flew into St. Louis for his 70th birthday last night, and that's why he's here today. Uh, I won that for one of my birthdays. <laughs> that, that's quite a birthday present, exactly. And he also gave a very lovely speech about the importance of the Singfield Cup and the chess club in general to the promotion of chess, particularly in America. So yeah, quite a positional struggle here. Now, the key thing about this game is, note that the Sinkfields, definitely strong amateur players, but not on the level of the other competitors of this tournament. So what's going to be crucial is when they step back in, what's going to happen? Are, is the position going to be blasting open at that point and put them under a lot of pressure? This opening suggests perhaps yes. It really depends how they use their timeouts. They're going to have two timeouts in those five moves that I think is crucial that they use them wisely. And we see that the first bench grandmasters are just standing up. We reached a 10 move mark as uh, Magnus Carlsen has played his 10th move. And I think it's an interesting position, but one that's not going to be that open until the Singfields come back into the board. Yeah, so very clever choices. Now, 26 moves, to, to so move 26 to 30, the Singfields are going to be back in. So it, unless the game lasts another 25 moves, they'll only play those five moves. So the key question is, are they both going to use their two timeouts in that five-move ban? Would you think that would be a wise decision? I definitely think that's a wise decision. I can't now, imagine them saving the timeout for a possible endgame, because that endgame might not happen if they don't use the timeout. They might just blunder something. They make a strong strategical mistake that they might think is an OK move. But when you're talking about 2,800 level chess, it might not be at all. So the move knight to e1 has just been played. And Kasparov is thinking deeply about this move. It's actually a very lovely Magnus Carlsen style of move. Or it's Forget Kasparov. The most high is the, is the best chess player. He's got the best moves. Fuck Kasparov. All praises to the Abanawa, Yahawa Bashimamashiak, Yahawashai. Once again, the most highs playing his game, his chess game, because he's the master chess player, okay, working on the minds of these heathens. India, which has been the largest buyer of Russian weapons in the world market, suspended existing contracts payments to Russia's arms exporter Rosober Export and refused to sign the new ones including the purchase of fighters and S-400 missile systems. The newspaper Vidomosti reports, citing sources in the Russian defense industry, that the payments from the Indian government have not been received since April. Indian banks began blocking transactions after a sober export and most Russian defense enterprises came under the U.S. sanctions and were cut off from payments in dollars. The Indian banks are afraid of the secondary sanctions that Kaza law envisioned a year. This law extends the sanctions regime to all involved parties, even if they do not participate in the transaction directly. Rasoba Export is considering the possibility of switching to payments in national currencies Indian rupees, rubles, dirhams, currency of the United Arab Emirates said the company's general director, Alexander McHeave. However, this concerns only the old contracts, as India is not in a hurry to conclude any new ones. From 2007 to 2015, India was the largest importer of Russian weapons. However, there have been no new deals with Delhi since 2012.
In January, it became clear that the negotiation of a contract for the delivery of S-400 systems, which had been preliminarily agreed upon by President Vladimir Putin and Indian Prime Minister Arendra Modi, came to a dead end. According to Defense News, Delhi did not approve Russia's requested price and delivery terms. Rosober Export requested $5.5 billion for the S-400 and refused to transfer the guided missiles technology. Four months later, India froze a joint project with Russia meant to develop a fifth-generation fighter aircraft based on the Su-57. The National Security Advisor Ajit Doval and the Minister of Defense Sarjay Mitra notified Russia about India's withdrawal from the program that started in the early 2000s. The Indian military were not happy with the financial terms of the contract and also technological parameters of the aircraft, which, according to them, did not correspond to the fifth generation of fighters in terms of stealth and avionics. India spent its military budget on the purchase of 36 French Rafale aircraft fighters and their weapons for 8 billion euros and bought the latest US anti-aircraft and anti-missile defense system ASAMS-2 for $1 billion. This summer, the United States granted India the status of a priority partner for the trade of strategic goods, STA-1, Strategic Trade Authorization-1. This opens the possibility of simplified acquisition of American high-tech products, including defense systems. Right. There you have it, man. India and that, you know. These soft bodies, man. They like to... He love, like to kiss Esau's behind, man. But he loved that Yankee behind the most, you know. But the most has got them switching sides and that, man. You know what I mean? Shuffling the pack. But that's all good, man. Cause it's all going to culminate in someone, <laughs> someone getting a nuclear, a nuclear missile exploding in their face, and that's a beautiful thing, man. And then we get out of there, and that's that's our salvation, man. So that's good. So I'd like to say all praises to Yahweh Shimi Yahushai. Double honesty, prosperous, and else a great millstone. Salutation to the Akim pushing this word in truth and sincerity. Kwam Yasharama. Right, Job. 33 and 14 For God speaketh once Yea twice Yet man perceiveth not In a dream In a vision of the night When deep sleep falleth upon men In slumberings upon the bed Then he openeth up the ears of man And sealeth their instruction That they may withdraw man from his purpose And hide him from and hide pride from man. See? And it says here, He keepeth back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword. So that's what the Most High does, man. On, the, on, the, on your bed when you're sleeping, he seals your instructions, man. Proverbs 20, 24 says, Man's goings is of the Lord. So the Most High is setting him up, man. You know what I mean? He's the one who's bringing all the, the drama, as they say. So, that's what we're waiting for, man. We're waiting for someone to step out of line, shoot down the plane, sink the submarine, blow up a warship, you know, some, anything. One little spark the most I can cause. And that's beautiful. <laughs> so lucky. That's beautiful. So, yeah. Let's get it on, like Mills Lane said, man. Let's get it on. Let's get to cracking. Let's see some war, man. Some early bonfire night or early fireworks. You know what I mean? So let's have some crackers. Not Christmas ones, but burning crackers. Anyway, shall I want? <laughs>